Millions in Syria and Iraq are facing water shortages as the region's longest river, the Euphrates, dries up. The Euphrates River, the longest river in Western Asia, is drying up. The river's rim is shared by three nations, Iraq, Syria, and Turkey. Its basin is shared by five countries and is home to an estimated 23 million people. However, the river's condition is not excellent. Scientists are shocked at how quickly it is receding. Worse than the diminishing flow of water is the fulfillment of prophecies in the world's main religions about the Euphrates drying up. Many Christians are keeping an eye on the nearly dry Euphrates River because of a Bible prophecy that predicts the appearance of four demons once the river dries up. So, is the historical Euphrates River drying up due to the impending fulfillment of Revelation's passages, or is there another cause we need to be aware of? What does this mean for the future of mankind? Let's find out. Although it starts in Turkey, the Euphrates River travels through Syria and Iraq. Before emptying into the Persian Gulf, the river merges with the Tigris. The length of the basin is around 1,700 miles, and its average area is 190,000 square miles. This is the longest river in Western Asia. Since there is more rainfall and melting runoff during the months of April and May, the water level is usually higher. Original vegetation also still survives along the river. For instance, the Euphrates River passes through a xeric forest in the southeast Turkish mountains. Along the river's coast, there are a variety of other flora and trees, such as oaks, pistachio trees, and rose plum trees. Cereal crops, including wheat, rye, and oat, are widespread in dry climates. The Euphrates River is not only breathtakingly gorgeous with amazing views, but it also has a lot of historical significance. For instance, numerous ancient cities such as Sippar, Nippur, Shurupak, Mari, Ur, and Urkuk existed alongside the river. Wealth was water. It provided the people around the river with rich agricultural soil. Cuneiform writings discovered at Shurupak and pre-Sargonic Nippur were the first to reference the Euphrates River. It is from the middle of the 3rd millennium BCE. Buranuna, a prehistoric Sumerian word, was used to refer to it. The river's name is spelled similarly to Sippar, a historic Iraqi city. There was probably an important and divine relationship between the city and the river. Numerous species of creatures, including snakes, small and large mammals, and fish, can be found in the Euphrates River. There are numerous plant and animal species in addition to various animal varieties. For instance, the Persian sand viper, levantine viper, desert black viper, beaked sea snake, and yellow sea snake are the most prevalent snakes in the Euphrates River. On the riverbank, willow trees and wild grass are present. In addition to vegetation, you can witness animals like hedgehogs, wild pigs, wolves, river otters, and shrews. They frequently drink from the Euphrates River's water. The Euphrates River is also home to and used by local bird species. When discussing world history, the rivers of the Euphrates and Tigris are frequently referenced simultaneously. After all, they played a crucial role in the growth of the Fertile Crescent's cities like Sumer and the Mesopotamian region. Early human civilizations were founded in this area after humans lived there and began farming and irrigation. Along the Euphrates River, the earliest towns arose and people developed written language, astronomy, trading routes, and other things. It is practically impossible to overstate how crucial the Euphrates River is to this area. The Euphrates River continues to be crucial to the people who live along its banks today. The river has been utilized to provide hydroelectric power, water for cultivation, and drinking. Agreements between Turkey, Syria, and Iraq are still being negotiated as each country's population depends on water to survive because the river passes through three of them. The Manger, Gar, Spiny Eels, Common Carp, and Yellowfin Barbel are just a few of the many varied species that may be found at the bottom of the Euphrates River. In the Euphrates River, the Manger is the largest fish. They are among the world's longest freshwater fish, in fact. They can grow to be more than seven feet long and more than 300 pounds in weight. They are very well liked by recreational anglers. Even if they don't dwell inside the Euphrates River, numerous other animals do. Several species of snakes, such as the Levantine viper, the desert horned viper, and the Persian horned viper, fall within this category. The Euphrates River's water level is lowering, 
which makes these snakes more of an issue. The heat and dryness in the area are pushing the snakes out, putting them in more human contact than usual. This infestation of poisonous snakes has affected both people and animals. Numerous civilizations have thrived along the banks of the Euphrates, particularly in antiquity. One of the most prominent civilizations in the area was the Mesopotamian Empire. Ancient Mesopotamia was referred to as the Fertile Crescent because it lay between the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. The present name for that area of the world is Iraq. Ancient flora still exists in the Euphrates Basin despite the vast majority of its landscapes having been drastically altered by human activities over millennia. It might be hard to imagine that this portion of the river was once a shining example of water management in Babylon given the way the river currently looks. The army of Cyrus the Great marched through Babylon and arrived at the canals between the Tigris and the Euphrates that were constructed to divert the water from the Euphrates that would otherwise flood the entire nearby land when the snow from the Armenian mountains melted. The basin connecting the Euphrates and Tigris rivers was crossed by numerous large canals as wide as rivers. Every part of the nation received enough watering. The canals also served as a means of transporting crops. The river was also used by religious fighters to promote Islam throughout the Middle East. The Caliphate of Muhammad's son-in-law, Ali ibn Abi Talib, was relocated from Medina to Kufa, which is located on the Euphrates River, south of Babylon, in the year 656. Kufa's lush wheat, date palm, rice, and other crop fields stretched for miles on both banks. Many Iraqi cities' identities have been centered on the Euphrates for millennia and continue to do so now. Consider Fallujah, which benefited from its riverfront location and was attacked by a variety of nations in the 3rd century AD, including the Persians and the Romans. On their way to the Mediterranean, Arab caravans halted at Fallujah to water their camels in the river. However, analysts are predicting bad things for the river. It's getting simpler to figure out what inhabits the Euphrates River's bottom. After all, this river's water levels have been declining in some areas for a while. The water levels have decreased as a result of drought, dam construction, and persistent disputes over water. According to a water ministry study, the Euphrates and Tigris rivers in Iraq will dry up in 20 years if nothing is done. Unfortunately, these two rivers provide up to 98% of the surface water in Iraq. In fact, Iraq may no longer have any rivers by 2040. Why has the Euphrates River been drying up for so long? Numerous dams, droughts, water policies, and overuse are only a few of the many causes. There is a severe water shortage among many river-dependent families in Iraq. Low rainfall is the main cause of the Euphrates River's drying up. Iraq is currently experiencing its worst drought in history. Iraq's annual temperatures are rising about twice as quickly as the world average, according to Berkeley Earth, a California-based nonprofit organization specializing in climate studies. Iraq and the surrounding region experience droughts in addition to climate change and rising temperatures. Iraq has warmed by a startling 2.5 degrees Celsius since the late 1800s, compared to a global average of 1.3 degrees Celsius. This issue has existed for years. The drying up of the river has an impact on more than 7 million people. Over 800 families have left the communities near the Euphrates River as a result of the crops failing due to insufficient rainfall, high temperatures, and the drying of the river. Sadly, another biblical river, the Tigris, is also drying up and losing water. The human-caused portion of the Euphrates issues, on the other hand, begins more than a thousand kilometers upstream, close to the river's catchment area in eastern Turkey, below the Taurus Mountains. For many years, the Turkish government has been building dams to improve agricultural land and provide electricity. The Kiban Dam on the upper Euphrates was built in 1974, while the Ataturk Dam was finished in 1990 a $32 billion project to build 22 dams and 19 hydroelectric plants on the Tigris and Euphrates rivers will eventually provide around 25% of Turkey's electricity needs. Syria built several other dams on the Euphrates and its tributaries, as well as the Tabka Dam in the 1970s, upstream of Raqqa, before the civil war stopped work. Water entering Iraq has dropped by almost two-thirds since the Turkish and Syrian dams were constructed in the 1970s. Iraqis and their neighbors have been engaged in water-related conflict for decades. When Turkey and Syria dammed the Euphrates River into a series of reservoirs, virtually drying off the river's downstream stream in Iraq, 
the situation came perilously close to devolving into war. In response, the Iraqi government built a network of canals connecting the Euphrates River to Lake Al-Tharthar, northwest of Baghdad. According to the Iraqi ministry, only one-third of the Euphrates River's original capacity will be reached by 2035. Due to the loss of Tigris water, Iraq will run out of 80% of the 53 million cubic liters it needs annually. Additionally, a recent NASA and German government research using satellite data found that, outside of India, the Tigris and Euphrates region loses groundwater at the fastest rate on Earth. The impacts of the Euphrates drying up are already being felt by the Iraqi people. According to aid agencies, Iraq's present water crisis already poses a threat to the lives of at least 10 million people and limits their access to food and energy. It's possible that up to 70% of the wheat grown in northern Iraq will be lost. To make things better, the irrigation system would have to be totally redone, which might cost somewhere between $60 billion and $80 billion, just lacking signaling impending hunger in the affected nation. In addition, when dams fail, there is less electricity available to power hospitals and other crucial facilities. It has been assumed that this incident is related to the events described in the Bible's Book of Revelation, because there are only a few reasonable explanations for why the river is drying up. Interestingly, because it is stated in the Bible, fewer people find the development surprising because they think it was pretty much a given. The end of the world as predicted in the Bible happening in front of people's eyes is what most frightens them. According to a lot of individuals, significant passages in the apocalyptic book of Revelation show how essential Iraq is in scenarios involving the end of the world. The Euphrates River is mentioned in chapter 16 of Revelation. According to the chapter, the great river, the Euphrates, received the bowl of the sixth angel, and its water was dried up so that the way would be prepared for the kings from the east. The sixth angel, according to this text, cast his bowl into the Euphrates. The river dried up because of the bowl's contents, and prior bowl decisions had contaminated or destroyed most of the world's water supply. Therefore, the way this water is used will not be affected in any way by this decision. It looks to be about pulling down a defense so that eastern kings can enter, rather than about defending the area. The Euphrates is referred to in the Bible five times as the Great River. It represented the eastern limit of Israel's past. Israel was able to cross the river, which was challenging, and was separated from the promised land of Canaan by a wilderness to the west. Israel found some measure of safety in the river. It travels about 2,000 miles toward Palestine before turning southeast and moving toward the Persian Gulf. The kingdoms of China and India were to the east of the Euphrates, which divided east from west at the time Revelation was written in the first century. Cyrus of Persia's army once conquered Babylon by diverting the Euphrates River, which flowed through the city. They marched into Babylon and took control of the city on the dry riverbed. The eastern invader will cross the Euphrates during the Great Tribulation, advance through Babylon, and then enter Palestine. The sixth angel holding the trumpet in Revelation 9.14 issues the order to release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. What does this actually mean? This is the voice that John hears emanating from the four horns of the golden altar, according to Exodus 27, 2. This voice commands the sixth angel, who is holding the trumpet, to release the four angels who were imprisoned at the Euphrates River, which was formerly the boundary between Assyria and Israel. According to religious people, the book of Revelation serves as a reminder that God is ultimately in control of these events and either announces or authorizes each one. Evil is never allowed to fully rule at the end times. We know they are demons because they are bound. These four angels are held captive in the Euphrates Valley, which has a murky history involving human wrongdoing. Fallen angels known as demons are frequently bound by chains of gloomy darkness. The Euphrates Valley, which is frequently described as being near the Garden of Eden, is most likely the site of the first murder. There have been recent reports of unsettling noises emanating from the river's depths, which may validate this route. This strengthens people's convictions that contemporary events point to Christ's second coming to vanquish his enemies and establish his heavenly kingdom. People have started to express their worries, noting that they had absolutely no expectation that the revelations would make any sense. Other theories connect contemporary events along the Euphrates to political goals and climate change. 
but the most compelling belief regarding the river is that it is predicted in the Bible. However, the drying up of the Euphrates River has an unexpected benefit, which is as follows. Archaeological finds. Many of these formerly submerged places spring to life when riverbeds dry up. Six distinct historical eras have been identified in the Euphrates Riverbed, according to scientists, Sumerian, Akkadian, Assyrian, Greek, Byzantine, and Islamic. Syria built the Euphrates Dam in 1968 without changing the course of the Euphrates River or making lakes in the desert. The most significant ancient sites along the river were submerged by the 100 kilometers long and 8 kilometers broad lake created by the dam, with only a few monuments and artifacts being preserved. Along with countless graves, this area is home to hundreds of Syriac Christian monasteries. When the sun shines and the lake water is clear, the submerged graves can be seen clearly. A few tombs have been discovered on the lake's right bank in Raqqa's western district. But the left bank hasn't received as much attention because it's more difficult to dig on due to its rockier terrain. The ancient city of Talbus was made visible in Anna, Iraq, by the Euphrates River's receding waters. In reality, according to Iraqi archaeologist Muhammad Jassim, at least 80 historical monuments have surfaced as a result of the Haditha Dam's decreased water level. The Mitanni Empire City, which goes back 3,400 years, was found when floodwaters in the Tigris River Basin subsided, according to the Duhak Antiquities Department in Iraq's Kurdistan province. In literature from Babylonia, the ancient city of Zakiko is referenced. It has a number of structures, including a palace, a sizable fence, and discovered cuneiform tablets. Some of the submerged mud walls that had been sun-dried for more than 40 years astounded the researchers with how well they had held up. This was most likely caused by the earthquake that destroyed the city because the higher portions of the wall's debris had buried and shielded it for centuries. Five pottery jars containing more than 100 cuneiform tablets, some of which were still in their clay envelopes, were also remarkably well preserved. Professor of Archaeology at the University of Tübingen, Peter Faltzner, views the survival of the unfired clay tablets underwater as a miracle. The team believes that the tablets, some of which may be letters, will reveal further information about the city and its prehistoric people. Long and wide, the Euphrates River represents the end of the world to some. The Euphrates River is important in the Christian Bible. When this river dries up, it signals the approaching end of the world. This is a forecast of what will occur just before the end of the world. Some claim that the Garden of Eden was situated somewhere between the Tigris and the Euphrates. It is problematic for individuals who live close to the river and depend on it for water and agriculture, even though it is unclear whether the drying of this river represents the end of the world. The Euphrates River cannot be refilled quickly, especially with the record low annual rainfall. The mighty river is drying up and we're hardly doing anything about it. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.